Hi, welcome to the A Quilting Life podcast. I'm Sherry McConnell from A Quilting Life. And I'm Chelsea Stratton from Chelsea Stratton Designs. And today's episode is airing on Monday, February 28th, 2022. It is also our 50th episode. (laughs) Huge milestone. Huge milestone. (laughs) We're really excited. I, I mean, when we started back... Uh, 2020 did you ever like think no. like 50 episodes no like, yeah I think we just we really were like okay this is awesome we're doing it and now we're here and yeah it's just been awesome so yeah. <laughs> we're super excited to be here we have a really fun episode planned for you today and we are going to uh start with Chelsea because she has The quilt on the wall and the quilt on the table, just a a fun little fact. It was, I think it was supposed to be my turn for quilts today, but we we got the all clear share date for our new fabric collection and our next episode, we'll be able to share that fabric. And mom has quilts done. I have quilts done. (laughs) I'm still working on mine, so we switched. So it kind of works out perfect. Yeah. Yeah. so yeah, yeah, you will be seeing mom's new quilts and new fabrics soon. We're really, really excited about it. Yeah. And we're actually taping that episode right after this one. Yes. So anyway, uh, so I'll, I'll turn it over for you for these yes. quilts. <laughs> okay. So the quilt on the wall today is called Monarch. I made it in our Harper's Garden collection and it's layer cake friendly. I love layer cakes. So this one's a lot of fun. And since spring is, I mean, it's kind of cold here right now, but spring is coming. So I thought, you want to know what? I'm going to get my spring quilts out. And Monarch was one of them. I love that quilt um, because it reminds me of my grandma. I don't know if you knew this, but she collected butterflies. What? Yeah. I did not. Wait, I I think partially I know this. Did you know that? Yeah. She had butterfly everything like... Kitchen that makes refrigerator me so magnets happy. and stationery and uh, pictures and that yeah. makes me so happy. Yeah, to know this. She loved butterflies. Huh. Well, perfect. <laughs> when did you first make this quilt? I've never seen it before. Oh my goodness, Harper's uh, Garden. Harper's was Garden is quite a few collections ago. Twenty eighteen. Yeah, twenty eighteen maybe. Yeah, because it was before Summer Sweet. So, so that about would four be years right. ago, huh? It yeah. was after Walkabout, though. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Before Summer Sweet, though. Okay. Uh, yeah. I really love this collection. Yeah. And now Harper is <clears throat> so much bigger. We named yes. this collection after her. <laughs> uh, so yeah, that's the quilt on the wall, layer cake friendly. And the quilt on the table, I just had, Billy and I shared a video, obviously, with the Be Mine quilt along. And we have a video showing the quilt top done uh, on the A Quilting Life YouTube channel, but I just wanted to put it on the table today because I'm so proud of it and I loved seeing everyone's quilts that uh, was able to join along on social along on social media. So Be Mine is made in our Sincerely Yours collection. It's fat quarter friendly. It has four different blocks. It's kind of similar to uh, what my all-American quilt is and uh, each block is a different skill level, uh, but it, I would still say it's uh, beginner friendly and we still have, we'll have the videos on yep. the YouTube forever. So if you still wanted to buy the pattern and have instructional videos to help you along the way, this would be perfect for that. So be mine, fat quarter friendly, made it in sincerely yours. And it was a blast to do the videos and uh, make this quilt. So now I just need to get it to the quilter. So. I was just going to say you should send it over with one of your new quilts. I know. I should. I yeah, should. I have lots of Sincerely Yours for backing. For Thank this you, one. Mom. Yeah. She's always looking out for me. <laughs> <laughs> so those are the quilts today, and we'll have those uh, linked for you. Okay. Uh, just a couple things I wanted to share, too. The spring issue of Quilts and more. I have these Seashore Drive placemats in there that uh, I think are really fun. They I are <laughs> so cute. Super excited to get them back so I can use them. I use Soft and Stable. Love Soft and Stable in the placemats. This is on newsstands now, this magazine. I ran out of my copies that I had extra, but uh, you can find them online or at your favorite store sometimes walmarts and grocery stores and yeah carry this 
magazine also. They and they're are adorable. Oh, thank you. And there's some really other cute projects in this magazine too. Oh, so awesome. Great magazine. And then also <gasps> wanted to share uh, Airing the Quilts. This is actually a 1,000 piece puzzle. And the photograph is the cover from my Sunday Best Quilts book with Corey Yoder. That's my pineapple quilt on the left and Corey's pineapple quilt on the right. And just this absolutely, it was it was my favorite photo from the book. It was the cover image. And Martingale recently did some puzzles and chose this as one of them. And we are super excited about it. It will be available in June. So you can get it from Martingale or from your favorite quilt shop. Re- really, really excited. They, I think they did three total. One of them is a, a cover from the Red and White Quilts book. Oh, that's going to be That's awesome. going to be a really fun puzzle too. And I can't remember what the third one was, but I, I believe there were at least three and yeah. all just really fun puzzle dig- designs. I imagine that's going to be a challenging puzzle. <laughs> Yeah, just looking at I it. I just like, said that this morning with with the quilts and then the trees in the background and everything. I'm no yeah. puzzler, but my grandparents are, and that they, they, they've sort of got to the point where they don't uh, attempt the thousand piece puzzles anymore. But yeah, maybe I'll have to bring them one and see if they can try. <laughs> yeah, no. One of the ladies in the office at Martingale said that when they got this, they opened one right away, and she said it was challenging. Yeah. So I. You're As a puzzle. You know, <laughs> I am quite the puzzle guru. And yes. from a very young age, I was always doing puzzles with said grandparents that <laughs> Billy is talking about. Yeah. And that was something that I did with them. I spent a lot of time with them at their house doing puzzles. So as soon as I saw it this morning, I like was so excited. But that's what I noticed. I'm like, it's going to be so challenging, but so fun. I'm really excited. Yeah. Well, and they had a cabin for several years and there was always a puzzle on the table at the cabin. Always. And especially if we were there with them. Yeah. You were there with your grandmother doing, you know. Doing the puzzles. Doing the puzzles. Yeah. I'd rather be doing puzzles. (laughs) So, okay. So should we just, we have some yeah, yeah, I, follow-ups I, and questions? Yeah. So um, the first thing here on the outline is that there was a really good follow-up comment from our last listener question podcast, not from the one with uh, oh. Marion and Val, but w- if you guys remember talking about the stains, uh, removing stains from like antique quilts. So we, so I'll, I'll just go ahead and read what um, she, she emailed you, mom. Okay. Um, so this listener said, I collect vintage but not antique tablecloths and linens and have, and have had very good luck with heirloom sewing maven, Martha, Martha Poland's quote, biz bucket method. There are numerous variations of this online, but basically it involves dissolving about a cup of biz into a five-gallon bucket of water. Biz features biodegradable enzymes and its cleaning force, as its cleaning force. The biz stain remover breaks down the stain with its enzymes. The enzymes feed on the natural stains and grime, cleaning out the stains until the cloths, until the clothes are back to their original state. I find it works well to remove old yellow stains. I'd suggest that people experiment with the strength of the solution and how long to leave the fabric soaking. As with any wet cleaning method, there is always the chance of colors running. If that happens, do not put the fabric in the dryer. If possible, don't let the fabric dry at all. Um, I've had very good luck using consumer dye removers such as RIT dye remover. I used the biz bucket method on fabrics that could not otherwise be saved, knowing that while biz is relatively safe, damage could occur. So wouldn't recommend using on precious antiques. Um, after all, the stains on antique quilts are part of the history of the quilts. Um, and she says, thank you for all your inspiring work. And this is Sharon C. from Maine. Yeah, I was so happy to get yeah. this email with this uh information and yeah i immediately told billy hey we've got to yeah got to share this so thank you very very much had, had you ever heard of i hadn't biz no. Buck of no biz i okay. hadn't i've heard of biz but i've never never heard used of it. it yeah okay yeah. yeah so this is really good information i do love this end part though where she says after all the stains on antique quilts are part of the history of the quilts and i appreciate that yeah because she's right yeah like 100 percent yeah, I love that too. I, they really are. So, All okay. Right. And Thank then, you so much, Sharon. 
And then there's just another quick listener question that we threw in here before we get into the main topics today. Um, and it's just about pressing, pressing seams. So this listener wrote in, I was always taught to press my seams to one side. When I moved to Tennessee, I visited a quilt shop and she always presses her seams open. So what is the proper way? Yeah, this is a really great question. And I thought it would, you know, be really good to address it. I'm just like this listener. Uh, I was taught by my grandmother to press the seams to one side, which was different from, I started sewing clothing as a young teenager and I always was taught to press my seams open. So then when I started quilting, my grandma said, nope, now you press them to one side. And uh, But then as I quilted more and more, I realized that, hey, there really are some times in quilting when it's better to press them open because it's good to, to reduce bulk. And I think the, the thought behind it is that when you press a seam open, there's a chance that the threads could separate. But but really, if it's going to be quilted, uh, yeah. Yeah, and it's so now, secure when it's quilted. Yeah, I do both. I, I generally press seams to one side unless I think it would be better pressed open. So yeah. I really think it's uh, up to you as a quilter to make that decision based on the project that you're sewing and where the seams are going to fall in the project. And yeah, um, sometimes it's more important to have it flat than than to have them pressed to one side. Yeah. I was going to say the same thing. I think yeah. it's honestly a preference. And right. so in these videos that Billy and I did with the Be Mine Quilt Along, we talked a lot about pressing and I was able to show people. And there was a couple instances uh, where I pressed certain seams open. But yeah, I think it's a preference. Most of the time I'm pressing to one side, but yeah. there are times when I press open. Yeah. Well, and I am, I'm looking at your quilt here and it looks like they are mostly pressed to one side to the dark yeah. so that the seam allowances don't show on the light background fabric. Yeah. And so, yeah, you you probably want to do that as much as possible when you have a lot of light fabrics in your quilt. Exactly. So. That was a great question yeah. though. Okay. Um, so getting into sort of our main topics, I wasn't sure how long that one would go for, but there, <laughs> this is actually taken from another question that we know we can, you guys can talk a little longer about. Um, and so it was from a listener that again, emailed my mom. Um, and she said, thank you so much for the interesting content, which you provide on your podcast. I'm very gr grateful for worldwide access, which allows us Aussies to watch your program. So she's in Australia. Uh, my question to you and Chelsea is, are there any quilt bo blocks that you do not like sewing and will always look for another block to replace? My most disliked quilt block is hearts. And then she says, oh. sorry, Chelsea, I know you love them. <laughs> I always find an altern alternate, alternative block to replace it. Is this accepta acceptable or considered bad manners? And so, yeah, I thought maybe you guys could open up that conversation by taking that that particular question and then just to also talk about other things you guys can do to modify quilts to either suit your vision or maybe your skill level maybe a maybe you like a pattern but there's a block in there that you is too difficult for someone to do so you know substituting might be the, the way to go yeah yeah like you said uh billy there's so many ways to to go from this first uh do you have any quilt blocks <laughs> you don't like i've never heard you I, say i i I can't say that I dislike the quilt blocks that I've never tried, like curved piecing and stuff like that. Right. But I I feel like I have tried most quilt blocks and I enjoy, I mean, obviously, Billy's going to make me choose. He's going to, I'm like waiting for him to be like, choose, Chelsea, choose. <laughs> no, I'll let you pick a few if you don't. I mean, I don't love having to make a quarter square triangle because oh. it's extra steps. I don't <laughs> love the extra steps. I'd rather right. do, but I don't have an issue with, I don't have any beef with any quilt blocks, I guess. Yeah. I really don't. Yeah. I think I, I don't really like super ultra modern, stark, sharp, angled oh that's a good type one of blocks yeah. that aren't star if it's a star it's fine if it has all the angles in the world but yeah. if it's kind of 
just, uh, I don't know, I just don't love the, and I know a lot of people love those blocks, yeah. and there's a whole world of those blocks, but I, I don't love, I, I'm more traditional. Yeah. If it's got a lot of starkness and points and corners, it, it should probably be a star in my book, yeah. not just some abstract type of block. I don't like abstract blocks, I yeah. guess. And it's like not a uniform right. shape yeah. either? Right, okay. yeah. Yeah. Actually, that's a great one because th- that's why I stick to most 99% traditional piecing. Mm-hmm. So I don't really, yeah, I love traditional piecing, but yeah, I guess that would be yeah. uh, one of them. Also, like matching like points together. I made that fireworks quilt by Thimble Blossoms. That one was a challenge for me. Mm-hmm. Uh, you really got to like pin or know exactly where you're sewing that was really difficult i didn't love that but i mean it was beautiful when i was done with it yeah so i don't know guys i don't have too much (laughs) beef towards the uh quilt blocks (laughs) i I don't love y seams but i'll do them but something else i was thinking is i don't love foundation paper piecing this is opposed to To, not english paper piecing i love that yes Foundation paper piecing, I just kind of call it a necessary evil. <laughs> I don't know. Like I, I, and sometimes when I get into it, I'm okay with it. I get, get in a rhythm, but yeah. I don't love it. But is that something you might substitute for? I would. I would. Like motor block I heads. I have. Well, motor block heads, I feel like I did all of those blocks that they released. You but did. But did you love it? <laughs> actually, thinking about motor block heads too, I didn't do the all of the applique blocks. Oh, did you? So you substituted. So I did substitute. Okay. Because it, I feel like, and this goes to the like later in the question, is it rude? I don't think so. It's oh, your I don't quilt. Think so. Yeah. so you should do what you want. Yeah. Um, I actually loved that. I thought she was so yeah. sweet for saying that. Yeah. I don't think it's rude or bad manners. I don't at think all. so either. It's your quilt and you are the creator. Yes. And so you should. The, every quilt you make should be something you love. So. Exactly. And if you don't like heart blocks, that's totally fine. Like, right. you know, there's always a substitution that right. you can make. And so I actually love that. Why would I want to ever stop someone's creativity? You know, right. I think that that's great if you want to substitute it. Yeah. And I was actually thinking back mm-hmm. also, one of the first block of the months that I did was from a quilt shop in Las Vegas, the Christmas Goose. And I remember this sampler quilt that we were doing uh, uh there was a block i i didn't want to do because of my skill level i was a new quilter and i knew that i just would not be able to do that that block and i remember searching through the books that i had and at the time i also wasn't really able to change the size of a block so i had to look for a block that was exactly the same size as the block i wanted to replace and I remember being so excited when I found in a quilt book a block that was the same size so I didn't have to do any math and I replaced that block and uh, there I went. I, I was so excited to uh, have been able to make that quilt and make it my own too. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. So, okay. So the next topic that we wanted to talk about is... Uh, about gifting quilts. So um, I know you guys, you have some extra things to add to this, but um, what got me thinking about it was a couple of years ago when you when you moved from your last house uh, into a smaller rental until you guys moved to this house, I remember helping, get, helping you guys move and just seeing the amount of quilts that you gave away. So I wanted you to sort of like transport yourself back to that that time two years ago and think about some of those quilts you gave away because I know you gave some to to neighbors, you gave some to my girlfriend, you gave some to pretty much anyone that came in and helped you guys move. (laughs) And so like, what was it about those quilts that let you part ways with them? Were any of those perhaps any original patterns you designed or do you keep all those? Um, And then are there also any quilts that you would just never give away that you want to keep into your family till the rest of your life? Yeah, this is a great question. Um, especially since I'm, I'm thinking of going through quilts again, very, very soon, actually. 
Yeah. Uh, and Chelsea and I have been asked this a lot of times. What do you do with all the quilts? Because yeah. we make multiple quilts with every fabric collection. And then we make quilts that we want to make because we want to make them. And we make quilts for family and friends. And so, yeah, the quilts accumulate kind of like rabbits here yeah. in our house, <laughs> I feel like. Uh, when we moved, I remember as I was taking quilts down from cupboards and shelves and places they were stored, I started a pile in our living room of quilts that I could give away to people that were helping us. And I don't think any of those quilts were my own designs because we keep quilts that we design for uh, the event that we give a lecture, yep. a trunk show, a guild show, uh, so generally, we will keep most of the quilts that we design in order to use as part of a presentation. I also keep quilts that, uh, if they were hand quilted or custom quilted, that it's really hard for me to give those away. I also, if if the quilt demonstrates some type of technique that I might want to share yeah. for my blog, uh, um, and have it available for photography or video videography. I'll keep those. But I had a lot of quilts that that I gave away when with, with what Billy is talking about that were made from simple patterns from other fabric designers fabrics uh, that didn't. And some of them, if I really love the pattern and it was by another designer. If I didn't have that original quilt custom quilted, I've kind of been trying to go back and remake it in our own fabrics. Yeah. Good idea. But yeah, because there there are patterns by other designers that you fall in love with. Fall in love with, you know. I actually have a swoon quilt that, uh, so I made... Uh, Camille's swoon quilt, the very first one, I pieced that for her and fell in love with it and made my own version with some Denise Schmidt fabrics. And I still have that quilt, but someday I'm going to make a swoon quilt in our fabrics. And I know yeah. you already have, right? Yeah, I did in navies and grays from Desert Bloom. And I also mixed in some of Camille's navies because uh -huh. they, they go well together. It's one of my favorite quilts. Yeah. It's I, I love the swoon pattern, too. It's, yeah. Uh, and I actually really want to make swoon 16 one day. Yeah, With me too. all of our fabrics. Yeah. So, yeah. It's a great oh, quilt pattern. Yeah. Uh, but I did, I gave away a lot of mini quilts. I had a, a next door neighbor who was helping us a lot with moving. She just kept coming over and helping. <laughs> and and uh, she was getting ready to open up a small business and uh, she was like, oh, those mini cutes would look so cute on the wall. And and I was just like, if they didn't, and I might, I don't think I gave any with my our fabric, but I had a lot of minis at that time. And, and she took several of them, small quilts, minis. Yeah. I don't think I ever can give away very many Christmas or Fourth of July quilts. I just keep collecting those. How do you get rid of those? That's like, those I was hard. thinking of that too, like. I know because I want a Christmas quilt for every bed yeah. and then on the ladders and then over the couch. And there's like no excess of Christmas quilts or 4th of July quilts to yeah. me. Like I will forever keep those. Yeah. <laughs> I've given away a few Christmas quilts that I can think of, but. I mean, you'll eventually run out of pieces of furniture and beds <laughs> to put them on yes. and then they just stay in the closet. So, I mean, I could see you giving them as a Christmas gift. Yes, well, that's actually, yeah. But this kind of leads me into why I was so happy to see this question. So Chelsea and I, and this is why I'm getting ready to go through my quilts again, hopefully this weekend, actually. Call me up. Um you want to look at them before I give no, away? No, no, no. I want to help you. It's the uh, oh. it's the organizer in me. Oh, good. I need the help. <laughs> uh, so Chelsea and I recently traveled to a guild in Southern California, and it was our second guild presentation since the pandemic started. But this was a really interesting event. This We were able to give our presentation... Uh, I was, it was like in the middle of their guild meeting. So they had yeah. part of their guild meeting and then we gave our presentation and then they had the second half of their guild meeting. And this was the Beach Cities Quilters Guild and they 
have a phenomenal philanthropy group in their guild. And it, it, I just sat there in awe of the philanthropy that these women have. And they read off the numbers of the quilts that they had donated in the previous month. And I, I probably my jaw dropped open um, 50 baby quilts to a, a nearby military base for military families who were having babies. Uh, dozens and dozens of quilts to multiple cancer centers in the area, City of Hope and other um, cancer centers and assisted living care facilities. I, I was just amazed. And then they had quilts that they were auctioning. Uh, um, so you could buy like a raffle ticket and then the, those money, those funds were going to be donated. Yeah. And I was just, and they had multiple women in their guild who would, they would take uh, quilt tops that weren't quilted and then they would get a backing and batting and quilt them and donate those. And I, w I was just absolutely like, wow, this is what I can do with some of my quilts that are extra right now. So I came home and I told my husband, I said, we have to go back because I'm going to go through my quilts and I'm going <laughs> to... Because I know they're going to go to a good place. They're going to take yeah. them to these cancer centers, hospitals, you know, military families. And I'm like, I'm going to go through my quilts again. And I feel like I've probably made, I don't know, 75 quilts during the pandemic. Yeah. So it's time to go through them again. <laughs> you know, I was really in awe when we were there. It was really inspiring to see yeah. them sharing all of this. Really incredible. Yeah. I, and that was one of the thoughts I had too. I was so happy that you were seeing that. Like, I was yeah. just like, you know, it was just really, really amazing. I really came home inspired by the service that yeah. they were, that they were doing with their quilts. And so I'm sure there's a lot of, you know, if anyone who's listening is part of a guild. I'm sure there's a lot of guilds that do things like that, but right. if not, then there's an another, I guess, idea to go and sort of spread that same thing. Look for places in your community that, that could use quilt donations. And, right. and the auction thing was really neat too, how you're saying, I mean, to raise money right. based on some of those quilts. So. Yeah. And I don't know, in our local area, I, th I think we have, um, you know, like shelters, they could probably use yeah. quilts. I think we have a Ronald McDonald house somewhere in Las Vegas area. They, for children, lots of places. But yeah, like Billy said, try to find a guild because they will always know what you can do with any quilts you want to donate. Yeah, definitely. And then, so Chelsea, I was... I put this, I know you don't have as many quilts as mom. <laughs> so, and I, and I called it, a, you know, I feel like what mom went through a couple of years ago, you could almost call it like a quilting cleanse. Like she, yes. like you still have so many quilts in this house that, yeah, there's there. And, and at the time moving to, to a temporary place, there was no way unless you just started stacking those quilts up in the halls. And we kind of did. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There were quilts everywhere in that totally. re rental. You know, so it's like you ha you were almost forced to in, in some ways just, just for space. You know, I, are you anywhere close to a quilting cleanse of your own or do you need, do you need a few more years? I need a few more years. A, because I, I think I would have a really hard time letting go because I started getting into quilting much later. I mean, I've been doing yeah. it for several years now, mm -hmm. but still. And then I did actually get to a point in my home where I was, we ran out of room in the closet and then I had two cabinets that I kept them in, but I was able to purchase that <laughs> armor cabinet and it has held most of my quilts, but it is filling up is it? <laughs> very, very quickly. And I know we're going to be getting quilts back from the Christmas book. And oh. I told my husband, I said, I like got to rearrange this, maybe fold the quilts a little bit differently. But there will be a point, I will admit, in a few years that I might need to do a little cleanse, but not a big cleanse. I think my heart couldn't handle that. Yeah. 
But yeah, I'm not there yet, but I will be. Yeah, because I knew soon. when we did that Christmas decoration video, I saw your yeah. arm wore, and it didn't look like full to the, yeah, to no. the max. It looked like maybe even half. I don't know. Is yeah, that... the whole bottom is filled, and then the top is uh, about, I mean, there's a little it's bit. Up there a little yeah, bit. it's getting up there. And, and I'm making new quilts now. But I do have good storage in the house. You and do. So, you have really great storage. Yeah, I do. And so we'll figure it out. But right now I have one of my best friends lives in our neighborhood. And she asks me that all the time. What, you, Chelsea, what are you going to do with all these? <laughs> and I'm like, I, I'm going to keep them and love them and use them. And but yeah, so. <laughs> well, and then I'll put you guys on the spot with this. How about. I mean, you have two fabric lines typically that come out every year. So you have all these quilts you have to make for that. And then if you have a project like a book or something, you're making quilts for that. So I, I understand you're on your business end, you're making a lot of quilts throughout the year. About how many quilts do you think you make every year specifically to give away, like for a gift? Ooh. Uh, I guess that's maybe Specifically that. to give away, just probably a couple. I... I tried to, uh, a couple years ago, I did maybe several for gifts that year. Mm -hmm. yeah. This Christmas, I don't think I did one this Christmas for a gift, but... Uh, but you did do runners. I did do runners. So for, many runners. Oh, yeah, I did. I gave a away lot. a dozen runners this year for yeah. gifts. Yeah. It was kind of the year of the runners. But yeah, I kind of have felt like I want to start rotating family members every Christmas and somebody in the family will get a quilt that yeah. year, you know? Yeah. I guess the projects you've, you did a lot of yeah. those like small yeah. projects for gifts, but yeah. Gifting is more of a goal of mine now before I feel like I was just making quilts just specifically for the fabric lines. And right. now I feel like I'm at the point where I can maybe schedule in something that I really would like to give to someone. So yeah. yeah. And I'm sorry I wasn't trying to like put you on blast. <laughs> like you never give anyone quilts. But I yeah, no, I understand no, I it is, you know, you have a lot of quilts you have to make yeah. every year just to keep up with your with your fabric lines and everything. And yeah. I, yeah. I'm sure but th then again there are people out there that just make quilts probably just to gift away because they're you know, they're not they're not make, they're not doing it for a business. They're doing it for a hobby and oh, for yeah. Yeah. for making gifts. So for sure. Um, I yeah. mean, if 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 you were making quilts all year just for gifts, yeah, you'd probably have like ten or twelve qu quilts that you could give away. But but <laughs> yeah. you, you can't you know you can't do that. So I was gonna say too, uh, back to the point about what quilts won't you give away. I'm more likely to keep a scrappy quilt too and not give that away yeah. because I love scrappy quilts. And yeah. so, and now at this point I have several scrappy quilts that I've done either motor block heads or my own block of the month or um, uh, quilts for publications that are scrappy that I, that have lots of our fabric collections in them. And I just will hang on to those forever. I love yeah. Love having those those scrappy scrappy quilts. I agree with that. And some quilts are just super sentimental. Mm -hmm. uh, the scrap ones, yeah, they really tug at you because you yeah. hold on to those scraps for a reason. Yeah. And I just made one that you know of. That's in something that everyone yeah. will see in the future. Uh, you, yeah, you did too. And right. uh, it uses all of our fabric lines and I was so excited about yeah. it and it just turned out beautiful. That's so. going to be a phenomenal book. Oh, it's <laughs> going to be so good, you guys. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. In fact, I, as I go through these quilts really soon, one of my new patterns that we'll be sharing next time is actually a, an older pattern that I've kind of updated and revised and uh, but I realized, wow, I could get rid of that original quilt now because now I have it in our fabrics. Yeah. And it kind of, it actually has custom quilting and is really a nice quilt. It's never been used. There are a couple that I might sell, just a couple that I yeah. feel like, you know, someone, there's some that I feel like maybe selling it would be the best option because somebody that would get it that would really, really appreciate it. Yeah. You know. But I agree. majority of them, I'm just going to donate really soon. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. So I want to show you something real quick. I'll be right back. Oh, my goodness. Grab that. And then 
Oh. Okay. <laughs> what? <gasps> so, so oh. you'll be able to swipe right. So before you do, though, okay. um, oh my I remember this quilt. It's a Camille Ross Kelly uh, pattern, and it's Kate Spain fabrics. <laughs> so, so I'm not sh- some of the quilts with the with the girls. I'm not sure if I can post those up. I'll I'll check into the guidelines of YouTube. I wish I could because you c- it's cool to see people yeah. right with the quilts. But oh, um, this is fun. Can you swipe? So, are there more? Yeah, so there are. But hold on before you swipe. Oh, oh. okay. So I'm going to explain <laughs> to you what you're going about to look at. So I sort of surprised my mom about this because I was talking to my fiance. Two years ago, when we helped you move, you gave her a ton of quilts. I did. And she has since spread them to a lot of her family. Oh, my and goodness. And aunts, uncles, those the three little girls you see are her nieces. Um, her mom, she has one still. And um, so, yeah, you can go ahead and start swiping through and see some of the quilts that you <gasps> donated. Oh, how and fun. The, they're being used every single day. So and those three little girls are her nieces, and they're actually on on a on an army base right now. Their dad's in the in the military. Oh, um, but they use them. Um, she has uh, she's given them to three or f- four of her aunts and uncles that use oh. them every. They love them. One of her uncles travels from one town in California to another town where his sister is, and he stays there sometimes. And he always oh. has your quilt with him. Oh, and he like- you know. He loves oh it. And goodness. so, and Isabel loves her quilt. So I just wanted to, I've, she got some pictures of some of the different quilts and I'll put the ones that I can up on the screen so oh. everyone can see them. But yeah, they this are, is so fun. Some of these I like didn't even remember. Like the this one, one I remember. Yeah. And I actually remade that in uh, another fabric collection. This was desert bloom right yeah. and this was published in a magazine but then i remade it in walkabout i think yeah but this was published in american patchwork and quilting too i didn't realize I almost yeah some of these i have a little you guys and this was a camille ross kelly pattern this is her fabric too what, her, one of her earlier her earlier yeah. collection yeah this is really fun yeah. oh my goodness yeah so for those of you Especially just listening with the kids the kids with the quilts is just like the sweetest thing yeah yeah i gave my mom an iPad with pictures of those. So if you're just listening, that's what that oh she's looking goodness. at. But, <laughs> but yeah. I felt like maybe you'd want to see that, you know, you just sort of going through that quilt cleanse yeah. and just, uh, the enjoyment. you can just put it on the table. Yeah. Um, that's so fun to see. And just see. sort of thinking like, oh, I need to get rid of some space or whatever. Like they do go out and people use them and love them and, and, yeah, I mean they they're not sitting in the closet. They're yeah. with people on a daily basis yeah. that that uh, and and one of them I think it was like the brown floral one. Uh-huh. Isabel was using that one for a while. She really liked it, but uh-huh. then her aunt came and saw it and just started raving about it. So she gave her that oh. quilt too oh. because <laughs> she really liked it too, but yeah. but her aunt was just talking about it so much that she gave it to her. Oh wow. So um yeah. So anyway, I just wanted you oh guys to see a little, uh, you know, two years later yeah. down the road where those quilts ended up and they're not, you know, I not love thrown that. away. Want to they're cleanse. Not, yeah. yeah. They're not, they're not yeah. in a closet. They're being used. And, yeah. and so I thought maybe that'd be a, something that you, you oh, could yeah. share with people that, like, you know, you never know where your quilts are yeah. going to end up. Yeah. I, I didn't really know about, I remember you giving Isabel a bunch of quilts and that's before we really got into doing youtube and the podcast and everything right and i was just like oh okay whatever but yeah talking to her later on she she mentioned how much like her family loves your quilts i'm like oh that's i love that it makes me want to give her more (laughs) i feel like yeah when i get these quilts out of the closet this weekend i feel like i should photograph them all and you know send pictures to the family and make sure nobody in the family wants any of them before i haul them off to a quilt guild but i think there will be plenty to go around either way yeah but yeah i love that i love that yeah that's so fun (laughs) and i remember all of those quilts you know and uh some of them too are just colors maybe that i used to really like before but now i don't love the colors as much so yeah yeah really fun yeah even a couple i'm like uh, that's i I've never seen quilts like that right. that you make and any you know, but they're probably older and you just right. It's been a while since you made a quilt like that. So Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, fun. 
Today was so fun. It really was. <laughs> I, guess. I was very surprised by that. Yeah, I was super I was, surprised. I was hoping it would be sort of a surprise. Yeah, <laughs> that, it's just fun to see those photos. Uh, yeah, I guess we'll wrap up this episode and we will be back on Monday, March 14th. March 14th? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Yep. And we will be sharing the new the new fabrics. I'm so excited. <laughs> we'll do a deep dive into deep your new dive. fabric line. Yes. <laughs> Tell you the history and all about it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, thanks so much for listening in today. And thanks so much for stopping by. <laughs>